trying to take flight, man. Let me get it for you, man. Berkeley with him. Take me with the jet, nigga, custom guy. Nigga, custom guy, nigga, with a custom guy. Nigga, turn him with the hammer time like he's in the back to the future. And this is a shit you never seen. Triple beam, broke up, all on the plane. Yeah, nigga, can't even get a crack on the plane. Nigga, say you don't talk to Sierra. Hey, baby, take your shoes. Like you never bought this jet, nigga. I'm a stand with my jet. Welcome to the show. Cause um today is about adversity should be a character. Which I had a situation this weekend which I was in you know, my adversity was my son doing something that I dishonor. And my first time having a whipping which hurt me to my heart. But the Bible said you spat a rod, you hate your child. So biblically speaking, I have to discipline him. Which what he did was he touched my little niece, which was a flagrant foul. Prayer on the play, ejected from the game. I had to send him home. I had to discipline him his Christmas, in which an eight year old and a five year old shouldn't be going through things like that, which could be life altering. So I had to at least teach him, and he had to understand that that you could mess this little girl life up for the rest of her life. And plus, bitch, I keep eating. That is my family. So as we go into the subject, you know, he told me everything that it was seeing something. It was just a little girl named Raya, which is my baby mother's sister child. And she said, he said, told me that she had been hunching him and things like that. He told me he also seen my baby mother. Watching the tape, which I'm starting to see, he's very honest and he he acknowledged it as a man and said that he know I got a dish for him that he got to get a whipping. It hurt me because he didn't want to go home. So my child's mother need to understand that right now is a point that we both got to start paying attention. You can't be worrying about no nigga or nothing. You got to be focusing and worrying about your children. And they got to be monitored because she just had a daughter. And which it all comes back to me as 
You know, when I was young, I used to be able to do whatever I wanted to. But these days, laws and stuff have anywhere we can't discipline our children. And they become a product of the environment, what they see on TV, in which they promote homosexuality and things like that, sexual exploitation of women and, you know, the thought. Which all these could be a product of the environment if you don't manage your community and your and your commitment as being a full fledged parent, parent and friendship is separated. Cause you just have to teach a child and you know, I have to come to the question of telling everybody today that a woman can't teach a man how to be a man. In which I totally agree with my opinion and my option and my theory. But my thesis is a woman can only teach him and guide him to the point to where home training, taking care of the home and, you know, his feminine side, which we all have. But manhood, masculinity and self-respect and pride. For which pride is a weakness. So don't be over prideful. But the do's and don'ts and the rights and wrongs about life, that's a father figure's job. To help him become a man and complete. First and foremost, you got to bring him up in the admirations of the Lord. So he can have morals, ethics, standards, class. But these days and time, you know, you have babies raising babies and so much genocide to where I'm against abortion. And, you know, I feel like a woman is woman enough to lay down and make it. She's woman enough to have it. So this Christmas, you know, which is my mother's birthday, she's been kind of hectic for me. But it ain't going to stop me from doing my job as a full-time father and podcast and stuff. See, it brought me to a point to where I thought about when I gave up the streets. Then I came to realization that was the best decision I said because like, drug use and addictions because all of that plays a part in fatherhood. Because addictions could be multiple things. Your person could have a sexual addiction, a touching addiction. But, you know, people could be addicts, but, you know, we all addicted to something, but it's all about what you train that child to do and how you face your own personal clauses as being a parent and doing what you got to do, what's right. Which I talk to my child's mother about everything that's going on. And I hope she's listening and she's starting to pay attention. You know, because, you know, with this going on, she had a nerve to say something. She had to call her husband and all that. But which we, right now we are, we on the phone talking about your son. Then from your experiences through that in life, you should know the value and how damaged a little girl could be. So for me, I still love my son, my son, and hey, man, I forgive him. But it hurt me to my heart. The discipline may have happened to send him home. This is our first Christmas. Then I wonder has she ever thought about it in years. That out of the whole time that she wasn't with me, and the time when he was born, we was together, you never gave me a Christmas. Which in areas, I am to blame. But there were certain things in my child's life that now I'm trying to make it right and do what I got to do as a man, man of God first. In which, you know, sometimes I have to even think about medication myself. Dealing with certain things and certain things throwing me off and dealing with addiction. Like me, once upon a time, I used to be addicted to marijuana real bad. I don't did a little ice before in my life. I don't suffer with multiple drug abuse. 
or Brutus, in which I have conquered them all off just pure, real, divine glory, asking God and just saying no to drugs. But my point is, I'm not trying to make this turn into an addiction for my child. I'm trying to do everything I can to get more involved, which he's on a year monitor. He can't go around nobody kids. And like I told him, lad, this time, you ever do it again, you going to jail. In which, trying to abide by love. Nigga had to me, tell me he did it because he wanted to. And then he took an ass with me. I watched him and him take an ass with him from his mom like a man. So I'm knowing, I'm seeing that you're made of honor. You're just that Raya, Red Dog, Demetria Brown. Because that's who you said been doing. So you're hunting, you're in touching. You. And then I heard your mom say this like the third time. So it's things that I'm not being told about that I need to be involved. But you know her, she's worrying about her relationship. Which that is something that she need to be thinking about as a parent. Your child could be going to a crisis because at the same time, I seen some things about his face and and the spiritual warfare, how his face was disfigured and changing. He wasn't even himself mentally when he did this. So that's something I'm going to pray about. As a matter of fact, I'm going to pray now. Because this is one thing about we're teaching about on this show, the power of prayer. Father God, I come before you, the throne of grace, asking that you fit to say the situation and train Messiah to abide by love and be brought up in admiration of the Lord and be obedient towards you and honor you with his body. And to not to have a lustful eye for females, but to be guided in spirit, wisdom, knowledge and understanding and to be a leader in the community. I plead the blood of Jesus and I ask in Jesus name. And I want to thank you all for watching the show and listening to me tonight and give me some feedback. Michael Mabry. Man, lifestyle, man, rich one. But guess what, man? I'm going a little bit richer, man, to my billionaire lifestyle, man. Yeah. Take a picture of that. Man, I sit back and I pop my shit. Man, I pop me a bitch and spit on some, some real shit. This thing called poetry, nigga, understand. I hit her with that spoken words, with nouns and these verbs, with these wise, wise words. Walk up the end line between love and hate, but hey, I separate the haters. Hey, and elevate the real, that's to my dying day. I put that on my seat, nigga, understand me. When a period come, I'm told you I'm Mr. Marijuana. I'm period comma, I'm Mr. He, not the summer, period comma, I told you, adjectives, nouns, and verbs, nigga, that's what it is, Mr. Gangster Grill, yeah, I be the teacher in the class, but when your ass couldn't, then your ass might not pass, I play principal, but when I'm cutting, I'm playing Grand Theft Auto when I hit that cover, that button, for nothing, nigga, no. If the profit ain't right, I don't even want it in. And if it don't make sense, or make these dividends. That means I'm losing. And that's the rules of the game. Y'all niggas ain't choosing. Cause the fact of the matter, all about this chatter, all about ice puzzle. Yeah, take it to another level. Health to skeletons, yeah. Freaky Friday. Turn your bitch life to Black Friday. Every day, nigga, she wanna fly away. Cause I'm seeing in that Berkeley really jet. And that thing platinum, and that thing chameleon farming wet. Wet. Yeah, talk to Sarah. Talk to a lesser, get her some game, baby. Yeah, a whole new lane. 
A food chain, nigga, top of the game. Yeah, put that nigga dick on the shelf, cause he's playing with my wealth. I